Good morning, everyone. I am Chiara Bassano, and I am a fellow researcher at the Debris Department at the University of Geneva. And in today's talk, I would like to uh, introduce you a project um, on about a VR uh, game for collaborative team building, carried out in collaboration with my research team, composed by the PhD student Giorgio Valestin and professors Fabio Solari and Manuela Chiesa all from University of Genoa Degrees Department. During the presentation, I will uh, uh, first introduce you the research goal and the experimental setup. Then I will describe the constraint that um, guided the design of our application. Finally, I will um, talk about the preliminary result we obtained by collecting data during the annual orientation week organized by our university. I will show you some conclusion and perspective. Virtual reality and mixed reality solution um, technologies have had a widespread success in the last decade, but the employment of these uh, technologies with an audience of people at the same time is still limited because it is not so trivial implementing application um, for um, a group of people being engaging for a group of people while only one or maximum two persons can actually wear the head mounted display and enjoy virtual reality. Solutions currently av available um, are based on the use of several low cost HMDs, for example, the Samsung Gear connected over the internet, and they are used in general in museums or amusement or if an activity uh, is not group-based or do not require interaction between um, uh, uh, users, um, people can just take turn to use a single head-mounted display. What we want to assess is the feasibility of applying VR technology to multiplayer contexts. For this reason, we propose a proof of concept of a VR system able to provide a high degree of engagement and activation to multiple users. Specifically, we designed a game for collaborative uh, team building, validated it uh, during a slow row gaming activity organized in the context of the annual orientation week, um, which took place in our university, and assess uh, participant appreciation level. The activity was conceived for a group of up to 10 people. A person wore the VR headset and uh, is immersed in the VR community. Um, the VR player has to um, avoid the um, sphere-shaped enemies coming from all directions uh, by moving inside the game area, which is surrounded by a table in the real world. The rest of the group is divided in two teams, the defenders and the attackers. The defenders can see the virtual environment for a fixed point of view from the top, and they have to help the VR player avoiding dodging the enemy. In order to have a common uh, reference system, um, we introduced colored lights, green, violet, blue, and red, so that the defenders can just say, uh, turn towards the red uh, wall, or uh, be careful from the blue wall, for example. Um, we also attached um, colored papers on the table, so we have also correspondence between virtual and real world. Considering uh, the attackers instead, uh, they use the Unity editor, and they have to create custom enemies using uh, pre-built scripts and uh, assets. Um, and they have to outsmart the communication of the defenders. So the setup is quite simple. There is a head-mounted display, in this case, uh, the HTC Vive Pro, which also provides uh, a tracking system, and the two um, monitors connected uh, to the same computer. Um, before the implementation phase, uh, we actually had to define some constraint which guided our uh, design choices. Uh, these um, constraints will be um, described in more detail in the next slide. 
but uh, they are the group size, the fixed time, the fact that the activity had to be educational, and that all the, the member, all the member of the team, had to be engaged. So the first constraint is the set size, the, the group size. Uh, the group was composed by seven, ten people. And the problem is that the bigger is the group, the more difficult it is to uh, keep all the members engaged, which is called Ringelmann effect. Uh, so uh, we had to uh, design choices. First, we split the team into some groups. Then we had we had the added competition in order to increase users' activation. Moreover, um, the time of the activity was 30 minutes. Five minutes were dedicated to explaining how to use the Unity Editor, how to create the enemies using the pre-built scripts and assets, how to set the parameters in the scripts and activate the object. Then attackers had 10 uh, minutes to defeat the VR player, and then the group switched. So there is a trade-off between the time dedicated to learning and to uh, actually performing the activity. And this led us to multiple design choices. For example, um, the average target user had to be able to complete the task. Uh, and the learning curve had to be fast. So the, the activity had to be short and simple. Then we decided the, to avoid to use controller. So the interaction was easier. And uh, as people who were in general not familiar with Unity, we used pre-built scripts and assets. Finally, the absence of external movement uh, avoids or reduces simulator sickness. As I said before, the activity was in the context of the annual orientation week, so um, the application had to be computer science related, so educational but also engaging. For this reason, we didn't use a um, built um, application, but the Unity editor in play or the bug mode. And we provided scripts which modify the common computer graphics and physical properties of objects in Unity, for example, the position, the velocity, the dimension of the object, but also the dimension of the collider or the transparency of the mesh. Finally, all the uh, team uh, members had to be engaged. For this reason, we had to balance task difficulty between uh, attackers and defenders group. First of all, the VR player health uh, regenerates over time. It starts from 100 and regenerates. Uh, so uh, if attackers want to defeat the VR player, they have to think of a proper strategy and not just have some lucky strategy. Um, then, while attackers prepare their custom enemies, um, other computer-generated enemies keep the defenders and the R player engaged. And uh, when attackers create a new enemy, they have to think that um, avoidability is inversely proportional to the damage. The final damage, in fact, is calculated as the initial damage. 20, multiplied by different weight, which depends on the property that uh, the uh, people modify the size, the collider size, the speed, or the mesh transparency. And the more av avoidable is an object, uh, the uh, less this, uh, the value of the weight is. Data were collected over 71 high school uh, students during the annual orientation week in 2019 and in 2020. Uh, as I said before, participants were divided in uh, teams of seven, ten people, equally distributed across genders and backgrounds. So people having backgrounds with programming were divided in the groups. And after the activity, participants were asked uh, to provide the feedback by rating the activity. One man did not like it all and five liked it. As you can see, the majority of people um, liked our activity, uh, even if just one person or two could actually wear the head-mounted display and uh, um, uh, experience, enjoy the VR experience. The final rate is 4.4 plus or minus 0.9. So 
In conclusion, today we have high-end VR HMDs, which are still quite expensive. They are okay for single user application, but if we want to organize group activity, this can be troublesome and uh, uneconomical. Um, plus, they have to be tethered to computers, which are expensive too, and um, the tracking area is limited, so multi-user VR applications are difficult to um, conceive and design. However, in this work, we show that it is possible to propagate the high level of engagement by defining different roles, attackers, defenders, and a single VR player. We hope to inspire the development of uh, uh, other multi-user VR application based both on the cooperation or competition paradigm, where more agents operate on the same scenario using different interaction methods. If you have questions, feel free to send us an email. And thank you for your attention.